Welcome to the screencast on functions. Functions are the basic building block of almost everything you study in math after algebra. And that's certainly the case for calculus. We deal with functions every day. So let's take a few minutes just to understand what a function is and kind of what they can look like and how they work in different forms. Uh, very simply put, a function, it's got some crazy definitions in your book, but the function is really simple actually. A function uh, is just a relationship between two, sometimes more, variables. So we're just going to put that up top here so we can see it. A function is a relationship between two or more variables. Uh, what's a variable? Uh, that's a good question. A variable uh, is just nothing more. So what's a variable? A variable is just a quantity, something you can measure with a number um, that can change. Okay, so a Anything that you can measure with a number that can change is a variable. So, for example, your age, your height, your shoe size, uh, the number of blades of grass in my backyard, the number of hours my kid sleeps every night, those are all quantities that can change. And uh, the thing about quantities that can change is that they things change sometimes in relationship to other things. Uh, like, for example, I'm looking out my office window here at home, and I have an apple tree in my backyard, and I'd say right now it's got about 20 apples on it, but it didn't used to have 20 apples on it. It used to have just zero apples on it, and then it started growing and growing and growing, and generally had more apples over time. So uh, there's a relationship between two variables here. One of the variables is time. Uh, you might measure that by uh, the number of the week of the year, uh, zero being the first week of the year. You might measure it as a day or whatever. And time uh, is connected in sort of a dependent way to uh, the number of apples on my tree. If you give me the time, like uh, like a certain day of the year, uh, like August 28th, which is the day I'm making this uh, recording right now, I can tell you how many apples are on it. So there's kind of like a little machine here. If I feed it an input like a time value, I can do some sort of process and come up with an output. And the means by which I get my output from my input, that's what my function is, whatever I choose. And maybe I just keep some records of my, uh, of my apples on my tree every week, or maybe I've got some sort of complicated agricultural formula that will tell me how many apples I have, uh, whatever. Uh, but if I give you a time like uh, August, 28th, the output is about 20. Okay, So sometimes we give these functions names, like I might call this apples as my function name. So uh, if I put, take my function and put in August 28th, I get out 20. Okay, That's how my function works. It's like a little machine. This input variable we often call the independent variable, common term here. The output we'll call sometimes the dependent variable because what I get out of this function depends on what I put into it. So independent and dependent variable. And uh, the independent variables come from a place we call the domain of my function. We're going to talk a lot more about domains in another screencast. And the dependent variables go into a place called the range. And we'll go into that right now because there's another screencast coming to explain domains and ranges. Uh, so, you know, another way to think about uh, functions is, like I said, sort of like a machine. So I'd like you to do a little uh, thought experiment here with me. Imagine that in uh, your dorm room or your house, uh, you suddenly had installed this incredible magic uh, device. It's a vending machine. And what's magical about it, here it is, the vending machine. I'll just call it V for vending. What's magical about it is that you can get stuff out of it for free. There's no cost. Uh, and uh, the supplies inside of it are unlimited. But the only uh, catch is you have just two options. I'll call them one and two, like little buttons right here you would push like on a vending machine. And one option is a candy bar. Candy bar. And the other option is a bag of potato chips. So you don't get a lot of choices, but it's free and uh, unlimited in supply. So this is like a function, right? You give a vending machine input, and it gives you output. Okay. So uh, well, how do I get output? Here's my output, my yummy snacks for my input. Uh, well, I walk up and press the number I want, and then it gives me the output. So if I input uh, the number 1 into this machine, uh, let's say I get out a candy bar. And likewise, if I 
put in a two, I get out a bag of potato chips. So it, we might say that V of one, okay, the output I get when I put in one is a candy bar. And I might say that V of two is my bag of potato chips. Now, if I walk up and try to type in a three into this, I don't get an output because that doesn't make any sense. I mean, so now let's take a look at some of the ways that functions can show up and how they work. Here's a very basic example of a function that's almost pure math. Um, this function um, is going to be like a machine again, so let me draw a little box. And I, Maybe I don't know what's in this box, but if I feed it a number, and let's just call that number x, that's my input, uh, and I call this function f, what I get out of this is uh, x squared minus 9. x squared minus 9. This is a function that tells me how to get the output from the input. We might write this as f of x equals x squared minus 9, more like a formula. But all this means is if I have a particular number in mind and I want to uh, run it through this machine, the output I'm going to get by squaring the input and then subtracting 9. So, for example, um, if I were going to put in, let me change my color here, let's say to red. If I were going to put in a 3, for example, into this function, well, I put this in, and f of 3 would be uh, 3 squared minus 9, and that's equal to 0. So we'd say that f of 3 equals 0. That's the output I get when I put in a 3. Likewise, if I put in a, uh, a 1, well, then that would be, um, it's almost like replacing the x with what the input is. Okay? I'm going to replace the x with a 1. So I would have 1 squared minus 9, uh, that's 1 minus uh, 9, and that's negative 8. Okay, so functions are, and its formulas are really simple to work with. I'm just going to replace the x with whatever the input is. Now this allows me to do some interesting things with functions. Uh, most interestingly, I can not only plug in numbers into this function, I can plug in expressions. So like if I wanted to put in f of, uh, let's say, 1 minus x. Okay, what exactly does that mean? Well, now my input here, let me switch colors yet again, something like a nice green here. Now my input here is 1 minus x. Okay, so what am I going to get from my output? Let me go all the way over here. My output, I'm going to get by taking the 1 minus x and squaring it and subtracting 9. Okay, this stuff right here is what used to be x, but the x is really more like a blank and just fill in the blank with whatever you put in. So what is that? Uh, let's, let's calculate that out. Uh, well, f of 1 minus x would be equal to, actually just put it over here as a blank, like blank whatever squared minus 9. I'm putting in 1 minus x. So let me do a little algebra. If I square this, I'm going to get 1 minus 2x plus x squared. That's this was all of this stuff right here, then minus 9. If you didn't see how I got the 1 minus 2x plus x squared, stop for a second and FOIL this out. All right, now let's simplify just by subtracting what I can. I would get negative uh, 2x plus x squared minus 8 from the 1 minus 9. So f of 1 minus x. I can put in expressions into a function and not just numbers. So let's look at one more example of a more complicated function. I'm going to call this function g, and I'd like it to work as follows. I'd like g of x to be uh, x squared plus 9 if x is bigger than 3, and uh, x squared minus 2 if x is less than 3. And let's put one of these little doohickeys there. So how does this work? Well, uh, here's my box, my g. Now, if I were going to put in, say, g of 4, or put in 4 to this function, what would g of 4 be? Well, uh, it, the output depends on the input here, and so here I'm in this case, 4 is bigger than 3, so I would calculate this by using the top formula, 4 squared plus 9, that would be 25. Now, if I were going to run, say, 0 through this function, uh, what would I get? Well, 0, calculating g of 0, I would use, that falls into this case right here, 0 is less than 3, uh, so the answer would be 0 squared minus 2, which is negative 2. And one thing you might note here is that if I try to put in 3 into this function, uh, I'd be out of luck because 3 uh, doesn't fall into either one of these. 3 is not bigger than 3. 3 is not less than 3. So I'd have to say the g of 3 does not exist. This is an example of what we call a piecewise function. Now we're going to talk about functions as graphs and tables and as verbal descriptions.